What's up, .NET developers? Are you a huge fan of Blazor, the latest, greatest web technology coming out of ASP.NET? Well, what about if we took some of the things that are great in Blazor, but also some of the things that are great in classic ASP.NET core web development and put them together to create something awesome? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over one of the greatest new features that's coming out for Blazor called server-side rendering, right here on learning c and .NET with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of Learning .NET and C Sharp. And I want to talk about my favorite uh, at the moment technology that you can build web applications with, and that's Blazor. But first, if you're liking this content, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, share with your friends. Let me know if you're liking it in the comments. And just in general, let me know what other sort of stuff you want to see. Let's talk about Blazor. So Blazor, for folks who might not be aware, it's a web technology built on top of ASP.NET Core that allows you to build quote unquote web 2.0 experiences without needing to um, wire them up with different pieces of JavaScript or different JavaScript frameworks. You still can use them if you want, but you can do it all in C Sharp also if you like. It just gives you more flexibility as a .NET developer. And one of the things that has always been sort of um, challenging, challenging is probably not the right word, but uh, that comes with Blazor is that you're tied into other technologies because of that. So most notably, if you're using Blazor server, you're dependent on WebSockets or SignalR or something like that to kind of have that communication between the server and the DOM. Or if you're using Blazor WebAssembly, you're dependent on WebAssembly as well as the mechanism to convert C Sharp into bytecode for WebAssembly, right? Like, because back in the day, if you're an ASP.NET Core, even ASP.NET developer, you're familiar with technologies like MVC or Razor Pages or even web forms that the serve the code was gen or the HTML was generated on the server and sent to the browser in the request, right? So what if we wanted to have that experience in Blazor? Well, the .NET team is working on just that um, with this idea of server side rendering with Blazor. It's really really exciting stuff because it allows us to build the applications that we want with Blazor the same way that we've done for the last couple versions of uh, .NET now. But now we have this ability to go one step further. We can build really, really fast applications that are generated, the HTML is generated on the server and sent across. So it's really, really fast. You're not dependent on uh, technologies like WebSockets or WebAssembly to make your app run. So let's just take a look at what this example could look like. Uh, and again, this is gonna be a really simple uh, example. There's some other great examples from folks out there. Um, so right now I'm in a command line. So as you can see here, so what I wanna do is I just want to create, let's just uh, go into this temp folder. And what I wanna do is I wanna create um, a project and then I'm going to, as a part of that project, I'm going to add a Razor component um, to that project and then I'm going to wire up the mechanisms to get server-side rendering for Blazor working. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do .NET new web and I'm just going to give an output and let's just call this SSR for server-side rendering. So this is going to create just a, an empty project. So if I go in here, if I go into, oops, SSR, and if I just, they're in here, there's nothing really exciting in here, right? And I can even open up, up this in VS Code. So VS Code Insiders dot. And if I drag this over to this window and zoom in a little bit, so as you can see here, there's nothing exciting. There's a program.cs. Let me move my head up here, just so I'm not completely in the way of the, our code here. Um, so let's just get this out of the way too. Do, do, do. All right, so I can go a couple of different routes to go to the next step. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a Razor component for this project. And I can do that via the command line. I can do like .NET new Razor component and then give it a name, or I can just create that file here. So I can right click here, click add new file. And let's just call this hello.razor, right? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna be an empty file. And in this file, um, I can wire up the pieces for my particular Razor component. So for instance, with this particular thing, I'm gonna have it be, I'm gonna set, so the default location. So basically what this is, is that whenever the root of the application is, is called, it's going to direct to this particular Razor component. And then I'm going to implement um, iRazor, component application, and then I'm going to just give it some name, and this is gonna be called hello, right? So at this point in time, I have, and let's just 
do this here. So basically I have the initial offering or the initial put together of a razor file. So, and then I'm just gonna add some HTML here. So doc type, doc type HTML. Is that gonna, that's not gonna close for me. So I'll close that here, HTML, right. So now I have an H, I have HTML and HTML and oops, I need to actually open my HTML, goodness gracious. So HTML, Lang, English. All right, thanks Copilot for helping me out. So now I have, oh, but now it's gonna, Nick Copilot's gonna ask, have, offer to do some other stuff. I don't want that right now. So basically what I have here is I just have just the, the structure for a HTML page. So then I can add a body. So body, and then inside of here, I can just uh, do like an H1, hello, hello. And then inside of here, I can actually add some C-sharp. So for instance, I can do uh, like the time is, and then I can use directives to get that data time dot now dot to short state string, right? And this is just a, a bad example of showing like, but basically what you can see here is this is C sharp code that's being called um, directly in line from HTML. And then, so the next step that I need to do is I need to wire up uh, this particular application, this project to call this component. And how I do that is in the program.cs, I need to do a couple of things. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to modify my builder to um, add a new service. So I wanna add razor components to that. So I'll do add builder dot services dot add razor components right like that if i could type properly and then the next thing that i need to do is i need to wire up my application to okay whenever the root of this particular application is called um it's going to call that component right now it's using app.mat get because this is like the empty uh, web project but if i get rid of this let's just get rid of this and if i set it to app.map Razor components, and then I pass in hello. It's going to freak out because it can't, oh, that's because it can't find that. So let's just do hello. And then I need to actually up here, oops, up here at the top, I need to add a using, so using uh, SSR. Right, so now this should, so now what I could do if I go back to my command line really quick, and if I get out of this other way and I dot net run here, what it'll do is it'll pop open a, this is dot running dot net run. It's doing up a dot net build first. Let me move my, my little thing over. Let me move my face, lock that so I don't keep moving that. So if I go here, I have a URL endpoint and I can hit that URL endpoint. And then if I move this over, cause I have two screens and then I zoom in a bunch of times, so as you can see here, the time is uh, 5, 8. So there's nothing really exciting here, but let's actually take a look at why this is interesting. So if I right click and look at the um, the uh, web tools for this particular application, I just open this up. So let's pin this, let's get this over here, this over here. Let's make sure, let's clear everything out. And then if I go here, you'll see that all that's being called is this, this one initial each, let me zoom in here. The only thing that's being called here is it's making a request for the page, the default page, the localhost page, and then some CSS. So if I was using a Blazor WebAssembly project, you would see some uh, JavaScript files in there uh, uh, to make the Wasm runtime work with the with Blazor. If this was using Web or if using the Blazor server, you would see some WebSocket connections going back and forth. But right now, as you can see, it is just serving HTML content. There are some caveats here, like you won't be able to do um, any sort of call back to the, the to a server from client like a click counter for instance wouldn't work or um unless you get a post back unless you do a post back as a part of that so it'd be a more it'd be in the more traditional route of building like an older application like with razor pages or mvc not older but um the the more server-based way of serving html but this is really really cool because it allows us to build like really really fast applications and that don't have like some dependency on a bunch of javascript or other sort of things so that it's really exciting there's some really really cool things that are going on here you know i could also i don't i'm not going to show a demo of it but let me just go back to my code i could for instance i could use the, the app get approach so i could do something like if i just do this and if i go app 
dot map get and then I specify the endpoint so like this so this is back to hello world right like what it was but I can actually get rid of this part here and I can do like new razor whoops razor component component I can't really type today result and then I can pass in hello and the same thing would work here in this particular case right so this is and what this will do is this will basically do that same experience what um, where I can pass in um, using the more, the minimal API or the map get approach to be able to do that. Um, and then you can do other things too. Like for instance, I, if I had an MVC app or a Razor page app, I could embed these Razor files, these Razor components into those experiences as well to serve the HTML. So like there's some really, really interesting stuff going on in the Blazor and ASP.NET core space. I'm really looking forward to what's coming out in .NET 8. Um, some of these things are gonna be there. Um, and there's other sorts of great things that are coming out on as well and C Sharp 12, which comes out in uh, November of 2023. So that's what I wanted to show. Please let me know if you like this sort of stuff. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, follow, share. And again, I hope that folks play around with the server side rendering stuff in Blazor because I think it's kind of it's going to really introduce some interesting things. Like for instance, if you all if you if you've used like a static site generator, for instance, like if you Hugo or Gatsby or something like that to build blogs or different static sites, you could theoretically use this, right? Instead. So instead of having to learn Gatsby or, or learn Hugo or learn something else, you could do it all in C sharp and literally just publish and then uh, copy your bits out there. So I guess, again, the possibilities are limitless right here. I'm looking forward to it. So that's it for me today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.